So with that, I introduce Michael. Okay. Okay. Yep, and this is just. Uh, Enter the okay. Space or use the arrows or use the remote. Okay. All right. So um, my presentation actually will be um, a whirlwind, uh, very graphic, um, graphic in the visual sense, um, <laughs> way of um, looking at um, tomatoes. I, at being a farmer, um, I have a lot of favorite vegetables, so it was really difficult to decide, first of all, what I would actually choose. So I chose the tomato, being a popular um, vegetable, and um, I had to use a little bit of my creativity in trying to get something from my collection to represent every letter of the alphabet. Um, so, and I fudged a little bit. So there's, um, there will be, I hope there'll be, um, touch, I'll touch on some of the collecting interests that you have while we go on this um, visual journey of the tomato. So, whoop, is it going automatically there? All right, hold on. Let's go back. We don't want that. All right, so um, A is for almanacs. And um, this is, you know, almanacs provided gardeners with planting and cultural instructions, culinary uses, and what varieties would be available to them at that time. Um, a whopping six varieties were available to um, the gardeners of 1859 from Comstock Ferry, which um, Stephen just mentioned, which is one of the oldest seed companies um, and still in operation today. And I'll be sure if you haven't already, um, Comstock was nice enough to um, give me a bunch of seed packets that you can take to either plant or keep as a future piece of ephemera um, as a souvenir at, when you leave. Um, and it's located in Wethersfield, Connecticut. So I tried to use a lot of Connecticut references when I did this presentation. The description at that time for tomatoes reads, until within a few years, um, was almost wholly unknown in this country as an esculent vegetable and only to be found in the borders and flower gardens for ornament or curiosity under the name of love apple. Um, only three years later, in 1862, this almanac and catalog from Johnson Robbins and Company of the American Seed Garden, also located right in Wethersfield, um, states the tomato is widely cultivated and is so extensively used in almost every family throughout the civilized globe that it is regarded as almost indispensable in every garden and farm. So B, uh, B is for botanical illustration. Um, oops, what happened to, sorry about that. Let me go back. Did I miss that? I'm going the wrong way. Sorry. Okay, botanical illustration, sorry. So this engraved plate is um, from the French work entitled The Universal History of the Plant Kingdom, and it's um, from 1774, and it's a very early um, depiction of the tomato or the love apple. It was um, published under the direction of Pierre Joseph, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Buckholtz. Um, it's interesting to note that if you look at this tomato, the form of this really early tomato is, it's very ribbed, and it's more flattened. It looks a little bit more like a pumpkin. Um, you could see why maybe tomatoes weren't as popular at this time. Um, also, what's interesting of note is the flower, which is up at the top, is red, which is a completely incorrect interpretation because all tomato flowers, regardless of the fruit, are yellow. Um, so it might be just the fact that the tomato was so new and misunderstood that it was you know, colored incorrectly. All right, B is also for Bloody Berry. Um, comedian George Jessel, nicknamed the Toastmaster General, uh, credits himself with inventing the tomato-based cocktail, and hopefully we'll find out later that that's absolutely incorrect from one of our speakers. Um, this is a 1955 Esquire ad. And according to GQ, um, Gentleman's Quarterly Magazine, the uh, fortified concoction is actually still one of America's favorites, especially at brunch and barbecue. And if you look to um, the right, I put in a 1935, stop doing that. I put in a 1935 um, illustration from General Electric's The New Art Cookbook showing a tray of the libation. C is for catalogs. I have 
hundreds of catalogs. So it was, I tried with Barbara's help to glean this down, but so I picked some of my favorites. Um, this is an 1887 William Henry Mall Seed Company catalog offering $100 to the person who could grow the largest Turner hybrid tomato um, for that year. Uh, Mall apparently paid $50 for his original, why is it doing that? Um, okay, paid $50 for the seed stock to grow his own, so if you work out the math, it ended up that that original seed that he bought cost him, uh, it was $1,600 a pound for the seed. So that's why you see it says here the $1,600 tomato. Um, let's go to the next one. This is another catalog, and um, William had mentioned that like food can be sexy, and I guess this tomato, you can't get sexier than that tomato. Um, <laughs> so this um, catalog, 1900 Peter Henderson's, shows really a le luscious, uh, very, you know, sort of voluptuous beefsteak uh, type of tomato. I'm going to go back again. Um, and the charming image, I think, on the right is also the back cover of the 1904 Henderson's catalog. I don't know who that gentleman is. It may be Henderson, but he's featured in every single catalog, one way or the other. He's a real person. He is a real person? Okay. Okay. He's not Henderson, though. No. Okay. Okay. Another catalog just to show. Also, I wanted to show this one because this Shumway, Shumway actually uh, created one of the largest, not in thickness, but largeness in size of catalogs. And actually, they still produce an incredible, a huge catalog today. And they use the same um, cut illustrations for the illustrating of their catalog. They don't have photo, uh, color photographs. They use those black prints. D, let's go right fast to D. Um, D is for diadem tomato. And uh, the diadem was introduced by uh, John Lewis Child's company of Queens, New York in 1897. And the image on the left is from the Mayflower magazine, which he also published. Um, the studying lithograph was done by H.M. Wall of Brooklyn. And these are the only images that I could find of the diadem throughout all my entire uh, catalog collection. However, it is kind of similar to a newly introduced tomato, which is a, a striped tomato. OK, I guess this is going to do its own thing. So E is for um, early, early tomatoes. And whether at home or on an industrial scale, getting your first uh, tomato on the table or to the market was greatly anticipated and celebrated. Also, you could start earning money from it. So seed companies were always trying to um, entice buyers by luring them in with names like Early Wonder, Early Anna, Scarlet Early June, Extra Early Bountiful, and King of the Earlies. I, I love that particular one. F is for father, as in the father of tomatoes. Um, Alex, Mr. Alexander Livingston, which you saw Livingston's, you saw the tomato before that was Livingston's um, of Ohio, has been credited with being the most dedicated seed pioneer in developing and promoting this particular vegetable. And through much selected breeding and tremendous patience, he was responsible for um, bringing us from that like sort of lumpy, bumpy tomato to um, a rounder tomato, like this one right here. And uh, it's a different, entirely different type of tomato for the consumer from that very early one from the 1700s. Um, and there's the back cover, and so you could see there. Uh, this also shows his um, Livingston's growing fields for tomatoes for the collecting of seeds. OK. Um, did I go the right way there? Sorry. I'm on G. OK, so G is for um, gigantic or giant tomatoes. Um, this is uh, from 1908. And it also shows the back cover from the Fairview Seed uh, Farm Seed Book of Syracuse, New York. And uh, some customers supposedly grew five tomatoes 20 feet tall um, <laughs> and produced 1,035 pounds of tomatoes. And the image on the right is. Um, you know, just shows a very large tomato there as well. There's a lot of hype in the seed industry. H is for hot tomatoes. Um, so sometimes, you know, the pinup quality or sort of sex sales kind of thing. So these girls, I doubt none of them are farmers. 
um, are showing off uh, Mr. Tomato beefsteak tomatoes. H is also for Heaviest or Henderson, Peter Henderson. Um, Peter Henderson offered a substantial cash prize to grow the heaviest uh, Ponderosa tomato in this 1892 advertisement from the Mayflower magazine. And in 1891, they paid $250 for a customer to name, um, give a new name to their tomato, the, which before it was called the Ponderosa, which at that time was just called the number 400. Um, I is for instruction. Uh, this is, I think it's a beautiful um, graphic of an 1895 pamphlet featuring sprawling tomato and pea vines um, published by the North Carolina Horticultural Society. Um, the cover is the only real sort of interesting thing in, on, for the whole catalog because the rest is just, you know, chock full of um, information on growing charts, how much fertilizer to apply and things like that. Um, but it was indispensable for the truck farmer of the day. Okay, J is for juice. And um, the next time your country gentleman friends get together um, or go hunting, don't forget to bring along the Heinz tomato juice, which will be available for the picnic. Um, this is a 1937 Esquire magazine. And try to remember that little monocled tomato, a man, because he's going to appear several times during the presentation. Um, here's another juice um, label, tomato juice. Uh, this is, a, this is um, of Sachem's Head tomato juice, and I live in Guilford, Connecticut, and we have Sachem's Head is right in Guilford. So this is of particular interest to me. I like to collect things certainly from Connecticut, but the closer to Guilford, the better. Um, I also occasionally use my collection, and I reproduce it as a floral designer. So for a uh, barbecue, birth 60-year-old you know, barbecue birthday party I did, I color scanned my antique labels and then used them for um, the containers for flowers. So ephemera is still alive for me. Um, K is for ketchup or catsup, depending. Um, a promotional booklet here from the Burt Olney Canning Company. Um, until only recently, um, ketchup was America's king of condiments and was just recently de dethroned by salsa but at least we're keeping it in the tomato family. Um, it's probably due to a higher Latino population and that folks um, want a less caloric kind of snack or condiment. Um, this is a promotion, I love this one too. This is a promotional booklet by um, the Bert Olin, um, no, I'm sorry. This is a 1918 magazine ad um, for CNC brand ketchup of Iowa, and then I, the other one has the oyster for sauce. Okay, K is also for killer tomatoes. Um, and I, I wanted, I did the red background because I want to make sure you're still awake for this talk. But um, this, is the, this is an official 1978 media release packet by the Consolidated Movie Poster Company in New York for the film. And um, I don't know of any other vegetable that had a story, starring role in any kind of film. <laughs> um, L, of course, is for labels, of which I have hundreds. Um, this is a 1940 Love Apple brand label, which I have to give Nancy Rosen credit for, for bringing to my attention, um, because I did not own it prior to getting this talk together. Um, and it's, not only does it have sort of a delightful image of the loving couple there, but it gives a history of the tomato right on the label. So you're getting an education as well. Uh, let's go next. Uh, here are some labels. These would have been actually used on crates. Um, and we have a patriotic one. And then I thought if I was going to put Uncle Sam there, I should recognize Native Americans. So we have the Big Chief Tomatoes. Super graphic. You know, as an artist, I find these really, you know, wonderful to collect. These are can labels um, from 1925, I'm guessing. Um, being a Valentine collector as well, I particularly like the Purity brand with the heart. L is also, or could also be, for the language of vegetables, believe it or not. I mean, I collect language, I collect language of um, flowers because of the Valentine across interest. But um, here you can see a postcard that actually has the tomato from 1907 featured. And um, an acquired taste. I don't know if it's for tomatoes or the young lady. And... Um, Wait, love will come. 
And there's others too, like lettuce and whatever. Uh, M could also be for matchbooks. And um, match, these are from the Hunt's Tomato Sauce um, Company, printed by the Ohio Match Company of the 1960s. Um, the epitome to me of ephemera, you know, something you strike and throw away. Um, these were never used, but um, they were, they've survived intact, and I particularly like their funky sort of 60s recipes um, for things like, you know, mom's favorite meatloaf using tomato sauce. Uh, N is also for NASA. Um, in 1984, NASA launched the Long Duration Exposure Facility Project aboard the Challenger shuttle, sending 12.5 million tomato seeds provided by the Park Seed Company, which is still in existence, into Earth's orbit and exposing them to radiation for six years. And when the seeds returned in 1990, the seeds were given to 58,000 um, teachers across America, like this gentleman, this is Lynn Dunn, He's a fifth grade teacher from Oregon, and he grew out the seeds with his students in class. Um, the project was also a space exposed experiment developed for students, or if you put the letters together, seeds. So it was the seeds program. Okay, O is for ox heart tomato. And here we see a Shumway catalog again. Um, as, the name, as the name implies, ox hearts have that distinctive shape. And um, this is their 1936 catalog. So you can see the yellow one and the other one there. P is for seed packets. Um, you just heard the whole thing, Stephen's talk on seed um, industry. So I'm just going to quickly go through these, or at least the machine is going to go through, quickly through these. Um, and these are from the Card Seed Company. I think they're beautifully printed, but I don't know about you, but they all look exactly the same, these varieties. Um, these two large seed packets are, in terms of scale, they're like four times the size of a standard seed packet um, by W.D. Burt Company of Dalton, New York. And they offer collections, collect collections of seeds, of which tomatoes are, of course, in there. So we have City Garden and Sunrise. And the amazing thing is for this entire collection, it costs 10 cents, and today when I um, planting seeds. Some of my seed packets alone for one variety could be as much as like five or six dollars a packet. Um, Q is for queen, and it's a yellow queen tomato that you can see in this Livingston. It's again, Alexander Livingston. Um, and it's, it's actually still a popular tomato for its low acid content. R is for uh, recipes or receipts, and we're going to hear a lot about that later. So I just chose a few that I thought were interesting graphically. Um, once, we're t once the tomatoes were finally um, welcome in the kitchen and no one thought they would kill you, they were devoured raw or prepared in just about every culinary technique and uh, cooking technology that was available to the cook. And the plate to the left is from an 1872 edition of The Modern Householder by Ross Murray, and figure five offers, um, not too appetizing looking, but it's tomatoes and eggs, and then Meat for Men, which I think is hilarious, um, is, was published by General Motors, and it was, pr <laughs> it was, pr it was provided for their um, employees. Um, next, a um, little bit more fanciful, which I really enjoy, are these two booklets by the Wesson Oil Company. Beautiful, really graphic, um, design on the right, and then the dancing vegetables. Um, icons of domestic bliss, the Nelson families helped promote summer hospitality, Ozzie and Harriet, in uh, the 1966 mini magazine, Compliments of the Hot Point Appliance. Okay, it's going faster here for some reason. <laughs> um, <laughs> this, there's always room for jello, and hopefully we'll hear more about jello, but this is from Knox Gelatin and Jello Promotional Giveaway Booklets. Um, S is for stamps. There's a lot of stamps, believe it or not, that feature the tomato. This one's from Iceland. Um, it's from 1972. It's a commemorative. And what I like about it is it also, it also shows that they're using their geothermic um, power of volcanoes to um, heat their greenhouses. Okay, S. Am I forgetting to use the letters of the alphabet? Um, S is soup, okay? So the Campbell Soup Company is, of course, famous for their soup. And these two magazine ads, both from 1934, 
Uh, I think the one on the left of Mark Twain is imaginative. Um, he's pondering the tomato. And there's a comment in there which you can't see, but he says, cauliflower is cabbage with a college education. <laughs> so I don't know. He never really said anything about tomatoes, but he probably would have come up with something terrific. And then the second advertisement also is creative, I think, because it shows um, World War II soldiers using the heat. We saw thermal energy to grow tomatoes. Here, uh, soldiers are using the heat from the engine of their Jeep, so they put the soup cans in the, under the hood. And by the time they stop, it's been heated up, and they just open them up, and they have hot soup. That's mm, good. Um, <laughs> tea is for trade card. This is actually probably one of my favorite um, pieces from the collection, just because of the beautiful graphics. And it was printed by the Forbes Company of Boston by the, for a Thurber uh, Wayland Company of New York. Um, they boasted that their products were the freshest and the most wholesome and palatable. Um, because they put up their tomatoes in, um, you know, really super hygienic tin. However, I did a little research, and I found out from, the, from uh, a paper in, in New York that in 1886, the company was sued $50,000 um, in damages, and I did not do um, what that converts to today. But um, the woman was allegedly poisoned by eating a can of tomatoes because of muri of zinc had leached into the tomatoes um, from the uh, faulty soldering process. So I don't know what happened to their stock after that. But um, tea is for trade cards. This is, um, there were some sort of uh, racially inappropriate trade cards, but this one I think is, is kind of funny, of um, rice's seeds depicting an enormous Livingston's perfection. And I think we saw Liv Livingston perfection as a seed. Um, <laughs> Can't see that one yet. Um, breaking through the window, sort of like a sunrise. Sort of waking these folks up. And then another rice seed card here, which I've seen reproduced in restaurants like to a huge scale. Um, this is of the Mikado tomato, or the Tur it was actually the Turner Hybrid. And the Turner Hybrid was introduced by the Burpee Company in 1885 and then renamed the Mikado in 1891. Um, a couple more trade cards here um, for superphosphate guano and also Heinz, Heinz um, pickling, which that should be a familiar graphic because it was on the website and it was used to advertise the um, conference, this conference, the, the boy with the cabbage and all. And it's for making a dressing for your tomato salad. And the next one is undressed tomatoes, you. Um, this is a stereoptican card from 1895 by the Littleton View Company captioned, How Biddy Served the Tomatoes Undressed. She has a very sort of risque decollete of her nightgown, her shoulders are exposed, and she's bringing tomatoes to the, to the shocked couple. Um, v is for victory gardening. Um, this is a 1990, 1919 booklet with a beautiful rendition of Liberty or Columbia as a farmer designed by James Montgomery Flagg, who of course is the same illustrator who gave us the iconic Uncle Sam Wants You recruiting poster. Um, and the booklet on the right is a 1943 um, book that gave instructions on once you grew things in your victory garden, how you could can them. Um, this is the back cover of that World War I um, pamphlet originally featured in the New York Tri Tribune, and it shows the president of the uh, National War Garden Commission giving a pep talk to vegetables, including the faceless tomato. The tomato just gets a bum rap sometimes. <laughs> um, and you can note some of the enemies behind the tree that are the uh, enemies to the victory garden, like the potato bug. Um, Landreth was mentioned earlier. Landreth is actually our nation's oldest still operating seed company. And um, Land what Landreth did was to support the uh, war effort was they produced this catalog in 19 during the war um, time as a sort of patriotic gesture. They really featured in their catalog only vegetables. They gave like one page to flowers because they felt it was more important that people grow food than to grow um, the frill of flowers. Um, v, uh, v is also for Valentines. Um, so I collect Valentines that are related to tomatoes. So there's a number here from a, a bunch of different uh, makers. And you can see some of those. The, the tomato and the heart slides over, and it's I love you from 
my head to my head to my toes to me toes. Five minutes, good. Okay, we're on V. Okay, W is for World's Fair. There's the monocled um, gentleman again. This is from the 1939 World's Fair, uh, featuring the aristocrat tomato mascot for Heinz. Uh, interestingly, we also see tomatoes being um, grown in what would be like sort of the precursor to hydroponics, except they would use sand, pure white sand, and then fertilize it. Um, they also guaranteed consumers that they did not use the newfangled growing technique for their regular tomato products. This was just for display. Um, w is also for wealthy and Washington tomatoes. Um, this is the J. Bull Guiano Company, originally located in Baltimore. When they moved to Washington, all their catalogs started having this super patriotic sort of, um, you know, landmarks of Washington. Okay, X, this is where I fudged. X is for exaggeration cards. Um, I couldn't find any X tomatoes. So this was produced, these were, the one on the top is the Pacific Novelty Company of San Francisco, showing gigantic tomatoes on a, a, on a freight a train. And then the one below, which is from 1910, was by W.H. Dad Martin um, of Ottawa. And he's like the most famous for realistic looking, you know, using sort of pre-Photoshop techniques. And then Y is for yellow tomatoes. This is a golden ponderosa um, tomato. And then zippering up the alphabet is zebra tomatoes. And actually, this is a uh, page from the catalog, which I have some catalogs for you if you'd like, um, from the Baker Creek and the Heirloom uh, Seed Company and also from Comstock Ferry. And uh, the tomatoes that are on the, the other two tomatoes are actually tomatoes that I've grown at my farm. Uh, red zebra, which looks like the diadem. Remember the diadem? and uh, green zebras below. Um, so there you go. That's the A to Z in a very fast. OK, so I guess questions? Any questions? Yes, that's my farm, Trout Willie Farm. So. Okay. Good. That's yeah. good. Yes, sir. Which I don't see increasing price of tomato seed or seed in general. Can you estimate what fraction of your cost in farming comes from the seed? What cost for seed? Um, not. It's not a big part, um, really, seed. And also, I. it's not that I'm a seed snob, but... Um, there's very few companies, I mean, I won't purchase companies from any companies that produce, you know, G genetically modified seeds. Um, so I have like only a few companies that I actually purchase from and I try to keep the seed companies local. Comstock, of course, is one of my family uh, favorites. That's not a commercial. They, you know, I wasn't um, asked to say that, but, um, but I like using heirloom seeds. And did you have the question about heirloom, like how many sh shaker seeds are still, someone did? Okay, it's not the same stock from Shaker, but a lot of those heirloom varieties are still available, and I only seek out um, heirloom. I try to seek out heirloom varieties. Okay? okay. Oh, I'm sorry. There was, was there? Yes, sir. Uh, the uh, late adoption of tomato in America, the intent, was that the same, uh, say, in other uh, cultures like Italy and uh, Mexico, where Yes, I mean, it was ornamental. I mean, the seeds would, I think seeds, tomato seeds actually were sort of an ornamental in, you know, in the English gardens and then came to the U.S. Um, so it was still suspect. I mean, its, it's scientific name actually translates out as being wolf, wolf peach. So it's, you know, that's a little iffy right there. Um, but it's amazing when you really think of the number of foods that are made with tomatoes that we think of as um, always existing, like for Italians, but you know, prior to the introduction of tomato seeds, with from like you know, um, conquest of the Americas, it didn't exist in those kinds of you know, in Italian cuisine at that scale. So it's hard to believe how how popular the tomato has been since it was introduced. Okay. <clears throat>